What's up y'all, welcome back. Today we are playing with a bunch of new makeup, trying new makeup. So I have the new concealer, two shades, from Tower 28. I have new lip glosses from LH Cosmetics that I just got in the mail yesterday. All of this just came yesterday. <laughs> And I also have new blush shades and new shades in the eye lights from RMS. Usually I don't do just stuff that came in PR, but like yesterday was just an excellent mail day. And I get kind of overwhelmed when it's like a video that's only new things because it's like, you know, you got like 25 different things. Like no one really knows if any of it was actually good because you're unfamiliar with the formulas. So I think this is a good tight set. <laughs> today and we'll be playing with some stuff that I've been really enjoying on my own and off camera and everything like that. So I think we're going to end up with something like really light and beautiful today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Also, I went on my Instagram just now, just now and asked for questions. So we'll see if anything even comes up, but I have my road skincare on. I don't have any lip balm on and I need to because like I can feel my lips starting to crack while I sell lip glaze. Someone did leave me a comment on my short about the lip glaze because I love it so much. Mmm, the candy glaze from YSL. And they said that there's like a L'Oreal formula that's like a really excellent dupe for it because they own them. So I bought it on Amazon. So we'll see. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I'm in like the ballerina core mode here and I just find this irresistible in the moment. I'm actually, I freaking pulled out Drage today too. These are both from Chanel. I talk about these so much, but for whatever reason, I like never use Drage on camera. This is the Boom, bo Boom, Boom, the Balm Essential. So it's the stick highlight, and it's just my favorite formula of this kind that I've ever encountered. And it's the most beautiful shade of like rosy pink, but it's like really translucent and dewy. It's so gorgeous. So I'll be using that today, but I'm gonna start with the LeBlanc Eclat Rosé Sore My Sore, the rosy light drops from Chanel. And I'm just gonna put it all over my face. I also have Isentry SPF on, like a lot of it as usual. Mm. Yeah, and this is just gonna give us a nice glowy base. That's, oh good, my camera's gonna autofocus today. You know, it just has moods and I just kind of go with it. So that's that on its own. It's so beautiful, it's so lightweight, and it is, for me, a little bit color correcting just because of the pink. And it does come in, I think, a bronzier shade too. For my foundation, <laughs> I hope y'all aren't either surprised or disappointed that I'm going to be using the Prada foundation. We're going to be keeping an eye out for when this comes. I mean, obviously I've already been keeping an eye out for it, but after all the interest that was stimulated by my review of this, I definitely want to make sure that I keep y'all apprised of when this actually comes out in the U.S. because, you know, I don't want to convince anyone to pay $30, $35 to order it from Selfridges in the U.S. So. Oh, uh, God, look at that. It just, it disappears into my skin, but it has the most unbelievably flattering glow to it. And it is so lightweight. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. It gives me endorphins. You know, it gives me, what do you say? It sparks joy. Look at that. Just the most perfect amount of coverage. This is LN5, which I misspoke. I said it was the fairest shade. I meant it was like the fairest shade that I could have worn. So I think it's the fairest neutral shade, but I think that there probably are lighter shades than this. Like the cool tones might end up a little lighter. God, ugh. I know, I know, I'm so annoying. I'm like obsessing over it, but it's just, I mean, it's so fast, it's so easy. It takes no product and like, obviously it's not, you know, comparable to like drugstore or even like Glossier or something. But in terms of like luxury, this is like mid-range priced. It's $54. And then the replacement is even less than that because the refill, like you don't have to rebuy the component. I just love it. And it needs to come to the US website now, <laughs> like right now. Okay. I have used these twice. I got these in the mail yesterday and I've used them twice. I did a full face of makeup using them. And then after I got out of my shower, I tried them just on top of skincare. And y'all, I am just, it is, well, it's love at first swipe because it's the swipe concealer from Tower 28. But this is a really, really incredible formula so far. It's got a really nice luminosity to it. The colors seem to be really good. When Tower 28 came out with their skin tint, that shade range was really good too. I really feel like they put a lot of thought into it. I have no idea what the color names mean. I have CC and BU. We will investigate and find out why they're called that. 
I would love to tell y'all that I have definitive answers on what the shade names mean, but the best that I can tell is that they are named after Los Angeles neighborhoods, but I still don't know what BU means. There's like a WGV, no, WSGV, which is like San Gabriel Valley. There's like CC, I think that that's Century City. West Hollywood, there's like a WeHo. SB, San Bernardino? I think that's what they're named after after which is wild i don't know why it's just as a color theory person i'm just like that's what they stand for but i am so already just like on a first and second impression incredibly impressed with this formula because i didn't have to powder it it looked fantastic underneath my eyes it blends like a dream both on top of other complexion products and just on skincare like it just blended right in the thing i would compare this it's right in between the thrive cosmetics which I love their concealer and the Kosas. So it's got the luminosity, but it does have Centella in it. I love Centella. It's like a K-Beauty, J-Beauty ingredient, typically. In their skincare, a lot of times, that's very, very effective at, you know, gently calming any irritation or inflammation in your skin. I use a Centella spray. It's just a fantastic. It's like what's in, I think it's the same thing as Sika, isn't it? So it's like Sika Pear, Sika, uh, whatever, like, you know, all the Dr. Jart stuff. Very cool to have that in a concealer because when you're concealing things, usually, well, not always, but a lot of times they're blemishes and they can always benefit from something that's going to calm irritation. So love that. Love it. So I need to shut up and just put it on. I'm gonna probably use both. So I will start with CC, which is the deeper of the two that I have, but by no means deep. And it is a very, very good match for my skin tone. And then the other one's a little bit brightening, but they both work really, really beautifully. So there's that. I'm gonna stick a little bit of that on couple of blemishes here. You barely need any. It's not going to go to full, full coverage, but I mean, that's also, I feel like why it lends itself so well to being worn on top of no other complexion products, just because it blends in and looks like skin. And so this is BU and I'm just going to stick that like where I would want a little more lifted, brightened appearance like that. Oh, let me go ahead and swatch them for you. So you can see them next to each other undertone wise. So BU is like super neutral, super, super neutral. And CC looks warmer, right? Like look how neutral BU is. Almost has a little bit of gray to it. And then this one has a little bit of like a peachy warmth to it. And that's going to like, you know, mimic my skin tone better, but I can wear either one. And it just disappears into nothing. It's luminous. I don't have to powder it. Look at that. Look at it. Oh, it's just, I know I sound like sponge lady. Wow. Oh, the wiggles. But like, it's so good. I just really, really love the radiance of it. Like I love that when you do pat it down, you still end up with this really pretty kind of, it's not like it is, I guess, kind of dewy, but it's not. It's like more of a like radiance to the actual formula. Now, does it have sparkle in it? I'm not sure. I don't think so. But I mean, obviously there has to be something in there that's giving it that kind of brightened pearlescence on the skin. There might be pearlescent particles in it. I'll have to look at the ingredients. Y'all can look at this and tell me if anything sticks out to you as something that would give it that kind of pearlized radiant finish. I am not super versed on that, but I am pleased at these ingredients. I like that there is lactobacillus ferment in there. So that's a probiotic. It's great for blemishes, great for your skin and caffeine. So that's the same thing that they have in the Kosas concealer that gives your under eyes that really beautiful lift. So love it. It's rare. I mean, not rare, rare, but it's less common that I totally immediately love something underneath my eyes as much as I love it on the rest of my skin. And like, look at that. It's not doing anything weird and gray over my pigmentation and stuff. And I think that has to do with the shade matches, like the undertones and the shade matches, but just look how like luminous that is. It's just so fresh looking. It looks super healthy. I look rested without completely shellacking myself. Like if I wanted to, I could have added a little bit more of a color corrector or something underneath my eyes. I don't think that this could be relied upon to get as full coverage as you're gonna get from, you know, the Uma concealer or even the Kosas, you know, but it does give, I think like, solid medium coverage for a concealer, which I guess would be like medium to buildable, you know, if you're talking about a foundation. Semantics, good grief. I 
look like I'm 22. Are you kidding me? If this is your first video I'm, that you're watching of mine, I'm 36. <laughs> I'll take 22 year old skin. <laughs> oh my God. My khaki's feeling herself. The cat that ate the canary. Wow. Can we do that to my neck now, please? <laughs> I really like this starts to really get on my nerves. I know it's like I obsess, but like in pictures and stuff, I see like when I turn my head and like all this stuff like crinkles up, I'm like, oh no, what do I do about that? <laughs> Aging is a mind, you know what? I wanna work in some powders today, I think, as far as my like bronzer and contour, because we're gonna be doing powder blush. And this is already so kind of hybrid, I think we can get away with it. I think we can get away with it. So I am actually going to go in next in a gentle patting motion with this, which I've just been so in love with lately. So this is the new Uma bronzer. I have here the BK A507. This is the shade White Pearl in the Double Take Sculpting Bronzing Powder. Uma repackaged a bunch of their stuff. I really like it. I think it's an improvement on the previous packaging. And then these are just I think completely new. They came out at the same time, the bronzers and the powder highlights. I'm pretty sure they're new. So yeah, this is the fairest shade and it is so excellent for fair skin tones. My friend Natalie is even fairer than I am and she's like, run, run, do not walk. This is ridiculously beautiful. So that's what I'm gonna start with is just my bronzer here. I'm gonna pat, pat, pat. It's just gonna bring a little dimension. I mean, I'm going to yoga in an hour. So like, I don't wanna laugh. I'm gonna sweat it all off anyway, like really, really quickly. But also I don't wanna look like I'm going in there with like this crazy full bead on. Not that anyone cares, not that I care, but we are going for something a little bit more subtle. Almost a setting powder, look at that. But it does, it just kind of adds dimension back in. Isn't that gorgeous? Cause you can always spray something with some good dewy setting mist and get the dew back. But that's just an incredible powder formula and the color is off the charts. I can even use that kind of like I use the Victoria Beckham bronzer where I put a little bit of it underneath my eyes. I just think that it's an exciting thing to have a color like this in my collection because it's just so rare that you get something that like you can apply with such a relaxed attitude because the color is just so subtle. And then we'll just do a little bit of contour. I have been using this one lately, the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. I'm gonna use the same brush. I like this because it's a little on the warmer side. All of Charlotte Tilbury stuff is a little on the warmer side, but I feel like it goes really well into my hairline. I've been less into, especially on a look like this, less into wearing a contour that like truly chisels my face and more into just using it to <laughs> fill in my hairline a little bit. Not that you can't do both, but you know, I lost a lot of hair and it's just such an easy fix to kind of remedy the sparseness. Just beautiful, subtle things. Also, I had an itch. <laughs> I had to change my battery and I was like, my neck itches. So to demonstrate what I was talking about, I have not powdered under my eyes. Look at that. I'm in love. <laughs> I'm in love. Okay, hey, <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, I'm losing my light, but we have three new shades in the gorgeous formula of the RMS Redimension Hydro Powder Blush. I think that I saw these in Blue Mercury when I was in the city with Hindash last week. So that was my first taste of being like, wait, there are new shades. And then I received them in the mail yesterday. So thank you RMS for that. So this is Crystal Slipper. Jeez, look at that. It looks a lot like Maiden's Blush, but it is a little bit fairer and a little bit redder. Then we have Cure Royale, which looks a little bit like Hanky Panky, but it doesn't have the blue shift on it. And then we have, oh, Bohemian Girl, which I think has more of a shift to it than French Rosé. I'll get there, but. Touching this embossing, this actually kind of breaks my heart. This embossing is so beautiful. Usually I'm very, what's the word? I don't care, usually, you know, but. Oh, screwing up that embossing hurts my soul. Whoa, we're talking about NARS orgasm. Oh my God, this one's going on my skin. Okay, so here we have Crystal Slipper, Bohemian Girl, 
and Cure Royale. They do have just a really beautiful luminosity to them, but these don't really have as much of a shift as some of the other ones. Bohemian Girl does have a little bit of a gold shift, but I feel like that's still pretty skin native, whereas Hanky Panky in the original release has literally like a blue shift to it. I think it's beautiful. It gives, you know, like a powder version of Fjord's cheeks, but it's still a little hard for some people to wear. All right. Grabbing a BK 104 here. I haven't applied powder blush on camera in so long. And I'm starting with Crystal Slipper because it's just this really gorgeous beigey tan. It's going a touch, a touch rosy on me, but really it's staying right there in that neutral, almost terracotta territory on me. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm as confident with this as I am with like a really, really skin native bronzer. It's almost giving bronzer on me. I would use that on my eyes. And actually I bought the first round of these back when I also had just bought a Guerlain quad. And I was like, why do I love this Guerlain quad so much? And then I realized like it was just like someone shrunk down the blushes that I had and uh, put them in an eyeshadow palette. I was like, oh. Like I did not need that palette. So they really do. I mean, even though they're shimmery, quote unquote, like when you swatch them, they just give the most beautiful blur to the skin. I think in the spirit of this being so like ballerina, we're just gonna go straight down the middle of this beautiful pink color. Wow, it's pigmented though. I gotta be careful. Okay. Okay. I dabbed it back off the, okay. I dabbed it off on the back of my hand first. So there we go. It's like the way Pat McGrath says all of her blushes are blush without caution. This is like blush with caution, but it's so gorgeous. So easy to use, no stamping, no nothing. Oh, gorgeous RMS. Let me grab the other one so I can swatch them against what I was talking about earlier. This is why I keep an encyclopedic collection. I think that there is still one that I don't have. And it's the coral one, which is like so unusual for me to not have the coral, but I just, I think I wasn't into coral yet when I bought these. So we'll start here. We have Hanky Panky and Cure Royale. Cure Royale is actually way different from Hanky Panky, way different. You know, my memory would not have told me that they were that different, but you can see Cure Royale is, you know, just a straight down the middle, beautiful kind of like berry laning pink. And then Hanky Panky, you can see the blue shift and it is, you know, verging on like wine burgundy. I think it's appropriate then to go ahead and do pomegranate fizz. This was sent to me in a box from Shop My Shelf. So this one came to my collection a little bit later, but it's still part of the original release. Pomegranate fizz is a really beautiful, vivid pink. Then we have French Rosé versus Bohemian Girl. This is French Rosé and this is Bohemian Girl. French Rosé has got more purple to it, more blue to it. And then Bohemian Girl is actually more of that, you know, NARS Orgasm soft peach that definitely still goes pink on my skin, but it's peach-er. These are all decidedly pink, aren't they? Wow. I mean, with the exception of Hanky Panky. And like I said, I don't have the coral one. Crystal Slipper and Maiden's Blush. So Maiden's Blush is even deeper brown than Crystal Slipper but they're both so beautiful. They're almost like two different bronzer shades, like rosy bronzer shades. So let me see if I can do them all again here. Cure Royale, Hanky Panky, Pomegranate Fizz, French Rosé, Bohemian Girl, Crystal Slipper, and Maiden's Blush in the RMS Redimension Hydro Blushes. Hopefully that's helpful. Wow, honestly, this is, this is a pretty impressive collection of these that I have at this point. And I, I just adore this formula. Plus these do pop out. You just push this little square and you can replace the pan, but they're not magnetic. So you can't throw them in a magnetic palette. I don't like it when brands do that, but you can always stick something on the back of them and get the magnetism. Like, you know, just put like a metal thing on the back of them. They sell those. I remember Salt New York used to sell those before Salt New York had their own pigments. They were selling these little discs with stick them on the back of them. And you could basically make any eyeshadow magnetic to go on the palette. All right. So now we have three new shades in the eye lights. This was my first introduction to kind of RMS 2.0. I was in Shen 
Rip Shen. They're closing. They might have already closed. I mean, they're going to be online, but the Shen store in Brooklyn is like closing its doors and that makes me sad. The thing that surprised me about these was, you know, I came in with a lot of doubt because I tried so much stuff from RMS during Clean Routine 2019, which was my year of using only brands that identified as clean as kind of an experiment to see if like there was anything to it. Spoiler, not really. I was there with Ingrid and I said, yeah, well, I'm sure those are pretty, but it's not going to be a sophisticated formula. They're not going to dry it down. And by golly, they dried down and I was like, whoa, RMS, what, what are we working with here? This is new for you. A product that actually has like a sophisticated performance to it, you know, like an actual like cosmetic elegance and not just like something that's pretty on the skin, but like creases five seconds later, these perform. So let's go ahead and swatch the new ones. No idea where my old ones are. No idea. Oh man. So for everybody who got really excited about my last video because I used colors that I don't typically use on my eyes, this is also probably going to please you because we're gonna have to strategize a little bit. These are definitely unusual colors for me. Not all of them, but two of them definitely are. So these come in this really beautiful aluminum bottle, aluminum tube, and each one comes with a little key, a little branded key that slides onto the end. Once you actually have dispensed enough product, it'll slide through right there and you can twist it down to make sure you get all the product out, which I think is really cool. This first one is Moon Dust. The purple is Aurora and the green is called Eclipse. I think that we're gonna go with like the green and the beige today. I'm just in that mood. I think that it's gonna be really pretty. Maybe I will pull out Victoria Beckham Oyster for like my inner corner and kind of like chase that green leaning feeling. Going in here with what they call this one? Moon dust. Oh, let's get a question. Oh, Tom said nail gate 2023. Tom is hung up on the fact that I have no chill. And when I got these Tower 28 concealers in the mail, they came in a coffee can, which was really cute. And it, I didn't realize it had kind of been sealed down so well. And so I just dug my nails right into the side of it. Actually, sorry, not a coffee can, a paint can. It has like a paint can lid on it. I just dug my nails in to try and open it the way that you would open a paint can and just broke these two nails off so fast. And the word that Tom used to describe how I function is they said, only you would just go in there so grubbly with your nails. And I was like, grubbly. I do do things in a grubby manner. They watched me try to unscrew a screw out of the battery pack on my, what is it called? I don't know, it's the thing that connects my microphone, my podcasting microphone to my computer. I already forgot what it's called, but it didn't have a screwdriver on hand. And so Natalie, cover your ears. I just like, tried to unscrew it with my Surratt eyelash curler and just bent the heck out of it immediately and like bent it back like it was okay, but it was devastating for about 10 seconds and Tom was like, you're the most reckless person I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm resourceful, I'm scrappy. And they're like, grubby, grubby's the word. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I had to go in and get my nails fixed yesterday. Any podcasts or music you're really loving lately? I was just listening to, let's go in with the green next. This is definitely super, super shiny. It's also giving that little bit of warmth on my skin, and I don't mean appearance temperature, I mean like an actual sensation that I get from the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters. It goes away and it doesn't hurt. It's just like a moment of warmth. I have no idea what that's about. But look at how pretty that is. It's giving ballerina. So anyway, this morning, right before I turned my camera on, I was watching the Candle Coven podcast from the lesbian wife duo that own Bijou Candles. I don't really know where this is going yet, but we're gonna just go with it. And they are the cutest, funniest two people. I'm obsessed with them. And their podcast, the video on YouTube will go up and it'll get like eight views. And I'm like, I don't know if people are like listening on like other streaming channels or things like that, but like they need so much more recognition because they are so amazing and hilarious and they put so much work into the candle coven podcast okay so like we kind of topped out on um blendability and like layering these before they dry down like we we are patchy m m m patches right now let's see if i can do this with my finger so they tend to 
focus on nostalgic movies, this isn't working. <laughs> they dried down and now they're dry and it really happened instantly when I layered them. So... <laughs> That's what we're working with at the moment. Let's see if we can remedy this with some other shadows because I think layering these is only going to make things worse. I mean, they work, they do what they're supposed to do, but I didn't realize that layering one on top of the other one would make it dry instantly. Wow. I'm sure there are other people in, in the chat. Hey chat, there is no chat. I, other people in the comments that knew that already and were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I lived and I learned, didn't I? Let's see, this might be a Horrible idea. I'm gonna see if I can layer some matte shadow on top of this. It's probably an absolutely awful idea, but let's try it. So I'm gonna go with a Victoria Beckham eyewear pencil here. There we go. Just get a little mattification, see if I can blend that down a little. So their names are Elena and Jocelyn. And like I said, they are like the cutest gay wife duo. And the movie that they were doing today, because they always dress up for the movies that they talk about. They're like, they call them campfires. So they did like a Bring It On campfire. They did a Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion campfire. This was a campfire for the movie The Room, which is one of my favorite kind of cultural phenomena that has ever happened. Do I like the movie? No, does anyone like that movie? It is a cringe fest. It's like really, really impossible to watch. And it's like wildly long. It has like these horribly awkward sex scenes in it. You can watch it on YouTube apparently. They found a version of it on YouTube that has all the sex scenes cut out and God bless someone for doing that because they are just the worst and they're really long and they're just, they're awful. But I was dating for like three years a guy who was like a cinephile who also like worked in movies. He's like a movie editor and he'd also worked in like the art department, things like that on LA and New York City and blah, blah, blah. He was so obsessed with this movie and I had like never heard of it. Pecan to the rescue from Victoria Beckham. And it is basically this movie, if you're unfamiliar with it, by a man named, a very mysterious, enigmatic man named Tommy Wiseau. And he self-funded this movie, the production of this movie in just the most mysterious of ways. He said in the Wikipedia that like he got some of the money by importing leather jackets from Korea, but like this man is just full of, I mean, the real word is lies, but you know, we will romanticize it and call it full of mystery. You know, all the interviews with him are just nothing short of bizarre. The man is just very, very unhinged and everything had to be his way on set and everything. And he ended up, I think, you know, spending like $6 million, maybe even more than that on the production of this film. And if you've seen it, how, where? But he just was so kind of obsessed with his own vision but his own vision was constantly changing and so he just bled money constantly and I saw it at the Alamo Draft House and they do not like a sing-along obviously but like a quote-along movie watching party kind of thing. My ex he not only was obsessed with this movie but he knew all of the quote-along things you were supposed to do like you bring plastic spoons and throw them at the screen at one point and then you say like you know who puts a chair in front of a TV and like yeah I'll have a vodka and whiskey because at one point he just makes himself a drink and it's just a vodka and whiskey which is like disgusting and there's just all these moments throughout the film that you make fun of and that was also during the time period where I think that everybody was getting really obsessed with bad movies because Troll 2 was also getting a lot of recognition for that. Then I went and saw The Disaster Artist which is the retelling of it with James Franco and I don't know some other people and it is done immaculately well. And that was where Greg Wetz's face was there for the, the chat afterwards at the Alamo. So anyway, I am not loving how this is looking. I'm not make loving that. I think this could really benefit from like chiffon from Victoria Beckham, just like right on the lid to kind of merge these two things together. Let me see if I can find it. But anyway, the Candle Coven podcast deserves a lot more recognition than it gets. I really hope that it like blows up at some point because they deserve it and everybody should go watch it. But yeah, they did this episode on The Room and they dressed up, they both dressed up as Tommy Wiseau and it was hilarious. And I haven't even watched the whole thing yet, but ah, yes, chiffon. Just to kind of merge that green. So what did we learn today about the RMS highlights? We learned that you don't really layer them because they just freeze the heck down. So I'm gonna do, ooh, let's do Drage. 
and then we'll do my eyeliner and everything. So this is Drage. It is just the most, let's do it like right here. Unbelievably beautiful, like blushy balm highlight. Ooh. Yeah, I made Hindash buy one <laughs> when we were at the Chanel Atelier. Now, Drage was not in stock, but he bought whatever the bronzy one is. So I'm gonna put this on a Splendoroo here, I think. Put it on my finger maybe, yeah. There we go, oh, oh, look at that glow. And what's so cool about this is like, when you have dry under eyes, and like you've been wearing your makeup all day, you can just touch your under eye right there and it brings the balminess back to like your dewy skin makeup. Oh, gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. It just kind of gives you that like lived in yoga skin kind of thing that doesn't look particularly great on camera. I understand that. Like it just made everything go a little bit translucent underneath my eyes, but it looks really good in person. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna throw on brows and mascara and eyeliner real quick, and then I think we're just gonna play with these lip glosses when we get back. It's definitely not doing a lot of favors for my eyes because I didn't get any kind of matte effect in the crease, which would be a much more flattering way to build a shadow, but I'm still into it. I don't know, it's cute. So we have three shades in this new Glaze High Shine Lip Gloss from LH Cosmetics. So I'm gonna swatch these for y'all real quick. Oh my God, look at that color. Okay, so we have Melt, Sweet, and Drip. And obviously Sweet is clear. So I'm not gonna swatch that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. They're pretty translate. Oh my God. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, first of all, I love an enormous doe foot on a really glossy lip gloss just cause it puts so much product down. I want it to feel abundant. Melt and drip, melt and drip. Oh my God, they're so pretty. Do we want the pink or do we want the beige? I feel like we have to do the pink. This whole look is just so pink. Ooh, they smell nice. Mmm, it's not quite like an on the nose vanilla. It's more of like a cake vanilla, you know, like a birthday cake smell. Well, that's cute. Do we like that? Or should I have gone with the bronze? I feel like I should have gone with the bronze. Well, you'll get to see both. Ooh, it's a really, really nice formula though. Mmm, even just having it on for a second, I was like, the glitter is really, really micro, so you can't really feel it. Ooh but there's so much shimmer in it that it looks like it's going to be that color, but this is a clear suspension. It's just got so much glitter in it that it looks almost like a color. Oh yeah. It's a really good smell. Mm. Little magic radiance moment. I regret that I only answered half of a question today. I'm sorry, I guess I just had plenty of other things to say, but that's okay. We get lots of opportunities to do this, but this is the final kind of ballerina core look for today. It's ethereal, it's lightweight, it's glossy, it's dewy, it's comfortable. It's really not very much makeup that's actually on my face. So as far as the things that we actually tried today, smash or pass wise, I, the Tower 28 concealers are such a smash. Also, I didn't mention, this component is heavy. It does not feel chintzy at all. Like this is a really, really heavy, luxurious feeling component and it is 6.5 milliliters or 0.22 US fluid ounces. I didn't powder underneath my eyes. I didn't powder the top of this concealer. It just sets down on its own in the most gorgeous way possible and I love it. It's been just a 100% positive experience for me so far, especially on top of my Prada foundation, <laughs> okay? Okay, we will all, like, I know that there are a lot of my viewers who are amazing about sending me a DM immediately when these kinds of things come into the US, so I will broadcast it as soon as I find out. The new shades here are just absolutely breathtaking. They're all really subtle. I will say, like, with the exception of the one that I don't own, I'm glad that we got to swatch them because you get to see that they really are, most of them are pink. 
So that uh, could very much inform your decision making in the future, but you can swatch these, I think, in store at Sephora and definitely at Blue Mercury. I've seen them at like every Blue Mercury I've been to. So you can go and, you know, take a look there and they are in replaceable pans. And then I would say that the eyelights are kind of the only thing that was like a little bit difficult today just because the first layer went on beautifully and the second layer really froze up fast. So I think that the better way to go about it would have been to apply both colors on one layer and then blend them together. And I think that it would have worked fine, but I would caution against getting too brave about layering them willy-nilly because the second layer dries down pretty much immediately. So that happened. But they also wear all day and they don't crease. So not on me at least. And then the lip glosses, I mean, honestly, this is a layup because, I mean, I shouldn't say that because I've definitely tried some bad lip glosses, but like the smell is great, the formula is great, the colors are great and it's so much glitter suspended in there that they look like they're going to be a color but it's just an abundance of micro glitter and i love them so i will obviously like follow up on this stuff later on like once i've gotten a chance to try it for more times than just a first impression but that was not a first impression on the tower 28 concealer it is truly knocking my socks off it's really, really beautiful. So I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, I heard that cool people subscribe. So it'd be cool if you did. I will put a video up here that I think that you'll enjoy. If you liked this one, I hope that you will keep hanging out. I love you all so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.